All right, Shalom, Shalom. This is your brother Malachi coming at you with another lesson. But first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakar Kadash. And in the ancient Hebrew tongue, that's the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His begotten Son, our Savior, Yahweh Shai. I also want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching this truth and having a 100% truth and alignment on the highways and byways, teaching a like doctrine, putting our videos diligently throughout the week, feeding the sheep. Shalom to you. So this is going to be another uh, screen recorder video, okay, um, coming from the YouTube channel Bull Boom Bear Bust, okay, talking about the effects of this economy, okay, you have uh, over 20 million people facing evictions, and he's about to get into that, okay, a lot of people are now facing the evictions, you know, for the last couple months they've had this, uh, this basically forgiveness for, um, you know, uh, uh, paying rent. OK, uh, or uh, late payments for rent, late payments for mortgages. But now all of those late payments, um, they have to pay. So now the um, the lenders of these of these uh, mortgages and, um, you know, everything, they're basically saying, hey, we need all that money right now up front. You know, all the months you didn't pay. OK, since this coronavirus hit, they have to pay. And they're you know, people are out of money. OK, 50 percent of um, the restaurant jobs that were uh, here before coronavirus, those are now gone. OK, a lot of these. Um, a lot of these job sectors are now they're literally no more. So a lot of people don't have a plan. OK, they're counting on this unemployment, which actually stops this week. OK, so you have America about to enter a time where it's going to be uh, total chaos, which is Jacob's trouble. OK, you're going to start to have more military on the streets because of all the rioting, all the chaos. But um, let's just get into this video, man, because, I, you know, this, like I said, this guy's about to get into it. But first and foremost, let's get um let's get a scripture. This is Second Edges chapter fifteen, verse twenty six. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against Him, and therefore delivereth He them unto death and destruction. For now are all the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. For Yahweh shall not deliver you, because ye have sinned against Him. Salakia family, of course, now the video doesn't want to play. <laughs> 48 percent of Americans have nothing invested in the stock market and 57. Well, the eviction crisis has already gotten started. The official moratorium for federally backed loans and properties ended yesterday on July 24th. One of my favorite strategists and economists, David Rosenberg, tweeted out the following, quote, as everyone focuses on eroding U.S.-China relations, the start of baseball and the fiscal shenanigans in Washington, a crisis begins today. It's called the eviction crisis. As the four-month moratorium ends and the nation's landlords unite, over 12 million renters slash mortgage borrowers are at risk. It actually could be much worse than what he's saying there, but we're going to talk about that and more. Hey everybody, my name is JJ, you're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. It is Saturday, July 25th, 2020. Thank you for joining me. How bad is this going to get? Well, let's take a look at some information. I pulled up a number of resources and articles today. Uh, there's already local moratoriums that have ended. Take a look at this article here out of Wall Street Journal. Over in Houston, evictions are mounting. Courts in Houston are overloaded with eviction filings after local moratorium expired in May. End of the federal protections could lead to more. And yes, that's what just happened yesterday. The federal protections have now been pulled away. So bulls and bears, this is going to be an absolute nightmare unless, unless something is put in the place of these moratoriums. And a smart thing, if you're a landlord, a smart thing would be to work with your tenants because you could evict your tenant and then not find anyone else to come take the place of that tenant and end up with a vacant property or end up with you know, no income versus partial income. So landlords are going to have to be smart on this and look at the supply demand equation. If people are out of work and they don't have money, you just have to lower your price. It's pretty simple. The problem is a lot of these landlords have carrying costs with their mortgages, uh, maintenance, taxes. We already see the courts are backed up in Houston, so people are not being kicked out onto the street. Even though the local eviction moratorium has ended, 
and I'm sure we're going to see an uptick in homeless. I don't think it's going to be the millions of people on the street like some people are predicting. And I actually still think that something big is going to come out of Washington very, very soon because the officials are the quote-unquote leaders right now in Washington. They're going to be blamed for this on both sides if something doesn't get done. So I expect new sweeping reforms to come in uh, probably between now and November. Would not surprise me at all. And the number of renters possibly that are going to be evicted, 28 million. Now, 28 million, of course, that's a lot. But to look at the magnitude of this, let's go to urban.org. So one in four U.S. rentals are federally financed rentals. So this is going to hit both sides, landlords and tenants alike. The landlords, a lot of them, again, have mortgages. So the eviction disaster could bleed over into a foreclosure disaster. Okay. Now, right now, none of this is happening or none of this is visible, I should say, because the housing market is very strong. Sales have ticked back up. Home prices have actually ticked back up as well. And if you look at the numbers from June, we have a 13-year high in home sales. And just in the month of June, 776,000 new single-family houses were sold. And that marked the largest amount since July 2007 when seasonally adjusted. Now that's pretty remarkable considering the very low supply of homes that we have on the market. Uh, just in our last video, we talked about the magnitude of the number of sellers that took their home off the market at the beginning of this pandemic shutdown. And what we're seeing here is a lot of upper income people, people making 75000 or more, which we also talked about in our last video. A lot of people are buying second homes out of the city and further out into the country, into the mountains, and away from the chaos and the dangers of living in the city, especially here recently. And if people aren't... All right, this is... a. Uh... Second Ezra chapter 15, verse, uh, verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So this guy is here saying that 28 million people are facing evictions, okay, along with the uh, actual uh, homeowners. They're having a, a situation right now because, yeah, they can evict the actual renters of their homes, but who is going to buy or who's going to um, fill that uh, fill that void? OK, when they when they evict someone who's going to now, you know, uh, 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 fill that um that housing. OK, because there's once again, there's no jobs. So the Lord, he's not he's now showing himself uh, throughout the world, man. Wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. So now the Lord. The, the, the one nation where wickedness, uh, uh, the central hub of wickedness, so to speak, is going to be taken down, man. It's, it's starting with their economy. This coronavirus, was, uh, the Lord put the spirit upon these, these Edomites, okay, the so-called white man, and these other nations to come up with this whole coronavirus uh, BS, okay? They're trapped in their own snares, man. They're trapped in their own pit that they dig. They thought the pit was going to be for all the other nations, mainly for you Israelites, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, but they didn't understand that they dug a pit for themselves, man. So I'm going to fast forward here. I just want to get into um, the sedition among men. Salaki, and now we got another commercial. To see, but regardless, the now was sparked at the beginning. A lot of people are buying second homes out of the city and further out into the country, into the mountains, and away from the chaos and the dangers of living in the city, especially here recently. And if people aren't moving out of their current home, they're just buying a second home to have a quote-unquote getaway property. Now, the unrest that we're seeing now was sparked by the events that unfolded out of Minneapolis. We all know that. That was a tragic event. But as predicted, it quickly is unfolding into much more than just being about the corrupt police. It is about now financial matters. For example, here's an article shows what's going on in Baltimore. There's people driving by the mayor's house saying to cancel the rent. Second Edges chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. The modern day sword is a gun. OK, so now the people, they're they're uh, they're not having the protection that they they once had. OK, the food security. 
okay, the actually housing security. So what's happening? Now the people are having swords drawn, okay? Now they're getting upset. You're starting to see the sedition among men. So if you think the unrest that we're seeing right now, and if you think the anger is at its peak, I think we need to prepare for things to get much, much worse. When these evictions start kicking in, and when the court cases start getting cycled through, and we start seeing people have to find a new place to live, maybe on the street, maybe in a tent, maybe at a shelter, maybe in a vehicle, maybe moving in with the relatives, we'll have to see. But regardless, the anger against the financial elites is going to get very, very bad. Much worse than you're seeing right now, and it's going to get much more dangerous. Look at all the, the crime rates that have happened in the cities. Crime rates exploding because a lot of people, again, are unemployed, out of work. Now they're going to have to find new places to live, millions. And Going down to verse, uh, this is verse uh, 16. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. So you're going to have people invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. So the kings nor princes, what's your modern day kings or princes? Those are your government leaders, your governors, your senators, okay? Your congressmen. The people aren't going to listen to the laws that those uh, kings or princes have established. Why? Because they're going to be hungry, okay? They're not going to have food for their family or themselves. So at that point, now their carnal instincts are going to kick in. And millions of people. This could get even far, far worse than we're seeing right now. And I don't think the media is properly warning people about it. I think we need to be extra, extra prepared, extra cautious. Another article here talking about this. This is out of sfgate.com. Oakland mayor's home vandalized with defund the police and cancel rent. <laughs> so this is getting serious. This is getting major. Uh, they're vandalizing and graffitiing people's homes, including the mayor. What did I just read? For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor their princes. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. OK, so look, Oakland mayor home vandalized with defund the police and cancel rent. So people are out of jobs and are putting they're literally vandalizing their king or their prince. In this case, it'll be a, a, a damn woman. OK, so that's just totally wicked. But they're, they're telling her to cancel the rent. Why? Because they don't have money because they cannot afford it. So now people, their actions are standing in their own power. They're not regarding anyone, and this is only going to accelerate, okay? In fact, let me go to Jeremiah, and I'm going to end it here, because this is the beginning. This is Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So the time that we're entering is a time like no other. There's no time that you can actually... um compare okay uh throughout history okay that we're about to enter a lot of people are about to get very very carnal why because they don't have the spirit okay or or the understanding of yahweh bahashim yahweh shai dwelling within them they don't understand so like they don't understand what's going on so they're only going to be so like they're only going to be carnal okay so i pray that this lesson was edifying i just wanted to show everyone that um Things are heating up out here, okay, and, 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 and the prophecies are popping, you know? The prophecies are now kicking off, and like I said, America's entering a, a, a dark, dark state, man, okay? Like I said, this is the transition of one kingdom to the next, man, but the next kingdom is the kingdom of, of, of eternity, okay? So I pray that this lesson was edifying. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakal Kadash, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai. Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yahawa Shai. Brakatha Yahawa, Brakatha Yahawa Shai. Wa Abad Babal. This is your brother Malachi. Signing off. Shalom, Yashar Allah.